Meet Inkastar and Mimi Cliffy, a TikTok sister duo who post videos lip singing and hand dancing to popular songs. Not much is known about the sisters other than the fact that they're based in Russia and according to famous birthdays, Mimi Cliffy is 23 years old and although Inka Star doesn't have a birthday listed, she's a bit older than her sister. The content is pretty simple. In each video, you got a song, a dance, and a list of emojis that show how to do the dance. But their content is very repetitive and kind of strange. For starters, they never blink in their videos and they rarely show facial expressions. People have also claimed that they often look sad, have bruises on their face and body, and wear bandages, which have given a lot of people an unsettling feeling. And as a result, it's left their viewers with a lot of questions. The main one being, are Inka Star and Mimi Cliffy kidnapped? So I've gotten a lot of requests to make a video about these two and talk about the whole kidnap conspiracy theory going on. I made a similar video in the past where I debunked the Beep Bop and BB kidnap conspiracy theory. And if y'all want to check it out, I'll leave it in the description box. But regarding the evidence to their quote unquote kidnapping, it pretty much follows the same lines of stupidity. So for today's video, I found a bunch of videos that people have made that prove Inka and Mimi are in danger and need of our help. So for today's video, we're going to be taking a look at them, seeing what people have to say, and honestly, just having a good laugh because some of these videos, oh man, some of these videos are so stupid that they make Harry and Marv from Home Alone look like criminal masterminds. So to start off, the first video we got is titled, Inca Star Will Die! Call 911! Explanation! Save them. Yes, they spelt it explanation, not explanation. Wow, that's a dramatic title. I mean, we gotta call 911 right now or else they're gonna die. Actually, hold on. Take a look at the pinned comment. It says the title is just clickbait and you can only call 911 if you're 18 plus. So imagine you're 16 years old going on a walk with your bestie to get some ice cream until you see an old grandma get her purse snatched from her and fall to the ground. I'm falling. And I can't get up! She broke her ankle and you can call 911 and get her the help she needs but only if you're 18 plus. If you're under 18, too bad for her. She's gonna have to wait and just sit there. I mean, by that time, she might shrivel up and look like the old grandma from SpongeBob. Chocolate. I remember when they first invented chocolate. But at least you'll be 18 and able to call the police and get her corpse some help. Anyway, jokes aside, let's see what this video is about. Let me explain why Pell think they are kidnapped. Look at this. Wear pink if you need help and do swavy if you're in danger. And then the next video. See, they did swavy Mimi and also wore pink. Does that mean they are in danger? Oh my god. Okay, you, you see, this is why we need age restrictions on social media. It's a big reason why people think Inca and Mimi are kidnapped because they leave a comment on their video telling them to wear a particular color and in their next video, they wear that color. So if they're doing what people are saying, that's gotta mean they're kidnapped, right? Well, no, it doesn't take a genius to look at the time the comments were posted and see that people are posting the comments after the next video was already made. For example, do suave if you in danger was commented May 19th and wear pink if you need help was commented on April 4th. But that video where they did Suave and wore pink was posted on March 23rd, one and two months before those comments were made. Literally every single video is like this. Inca posts a TikTok, so people go to a previous video and comment what they wore in that new video. And people fail to look at the times those comments were posted and they think, oh my God, they actually did it. But no, those comments were made like, you know, one, two months, three months after the next video was made. All right, so the next video we got is titled, We Need to Help Them. Also, look how she shakes her head no after as if someone asked her a question. Watch how scared she looks, like she's asking for help through her eyes. Oh my god. <sighs> what type of facial expression is she supposed to make? Like, what is she supposed to do when she does the sleeping thing? Smile? Nah, nah, nah. She would be looking like she's in that movie smile. That is terrifying. Who wants that? It's honestly confirmation bias at its finest here. Inca slightly tilts her head back to reposition herself with a straight posture. How do you want her to reposition her neck? Like she's in the movie The Exorcist? It just doesn't make any sense. If someone was behind the camera asking her a question, you would think that you would look at them while they're speaking. All right then. We fell asleep, woke up, and were terrified. We don't remember the rest. Boy, if you don't- This person is honestly reaching more than Reed Richards himself. It's literally a dance to the lyrics. Someone really commented when she landed on the scary guy, it means that they were kidnapped by a man. Bro, the song is literally called The Monster. What emoji do you want them to put for the monster? A carrot? Or actually, no, maybe you could do a cookie to represent the cookie monster. But guys, wait, the video says there's more, so let's check it out.
Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Again, people fail to look at when the comments were made. The pinned comment was from one month ago, and the wear white comment was from seven days ago. So let's just say the comment was made at least 21 days after the video was posted. I found the video and it was posted on June 26, 2022, but the next video was posted only three days later on June 29, 2022. So that means the comment on the previous video was posted 17 days after the next video was made. No, no, no. Bro, okay, I'm done. I just can't with this video anymore. All right, so the next video we got, it actually exceeds the level of stupidity that the previous one just had. And look, I get that it's probably kids making these videos, but I don't remember being this dumb when I was 10 years old. So the next video we got, it's got a pretty basic title, Inca Star Need Help. Let's take a look and see if they got any good evidence. <laughs> Okay, hold on, let me get this straight. So the person is claiming that in their old videos they used to blink, but in their new videos they don't blink. So taking a look at this again, they're arguing that the fact they don't blink in their new videos is because they're kidnapped. I, I, I don't understand the correlation there, but... Okay, I don't know if y'all noticed, but I barely blink in my videos. Does that mean I'm kidnapped? And the comments in this video, they're so strange. Someone said, I'm pretty sure if you blink twice in a row, it means you need help. And another person said, Inna now, not Inna, because the real Inna is dead because she blinked. Like, what? How? Like, what? Bro, what? Someone killed her because she blinked? Like, how does that make any sense? Just imagine a movie where a guy is holding someone hostage and they look at them and are like, If you blink, like, how stupid would that be? Nah, but if you thought those two comments were dumb, hold on, I found an even dumber one. I found a comment where someone thinks that Inca is a robot. I found another comment where someone said, finally she blinked, because if she doesn't, she would become a doll. All right, so the next video that we got is titled, Proofs That Proofs Inca Star Girls Are Kidnapped. Honestly, there is one thing that's for sure. These titles just keep getting worse. No, no, no. So some people actually think that this TikTok is just a normal TikTok, but in my thoughts is that she picks the candy basically to tell us that if she got kidnapped and she got offered candy and they took her, but I think that I'm right. <laughs> All right, so let me get this straight. So because someone prefers to eat candy over broccoli and drink beer, it means they're kidnapped. And to be extra clear, you're saying that an 18 year old loves candy so much that they would go into a random stranger's van for some candy? Bro really thinks that Willy Wonka himself moved to Russia and kidnapped Inca Star. I think these girls need help. All right, all right, okay. It's probably the most normal title that we've seen thus far. And it's actually grammatically correct, which, you know, that's a plus. And I know we're definitely in for a good one because they got Roblox playing in the background. Playing Roblox while you're discussing a serious topic like a girl being kidnapped, being forced to make videos. I mean, you know we're in for some top tier Sherlock Holmes quality. Me and my friend think they are kidnapped. Just look at this clip. It looks like she is looking at someone. Best friend, we killing them. Here is a video where they show the help sign. All right, yeah, she is looking at someone. Inca's head. Bruh. If you don't want her looking at the back of her head, where do you want her looking at, her bum? It just doesn't make any sense. A kidnapper is willingly gonna let these two girls post a TikTok showing a hand symbol that means help. They're really making Harry and Marv look at the reincarnation of Einstein and Newton. There is another thing suspicious about them. It's their emojis they use in emoji challenges. Just see if you understand what they mean when they use these emojis. No, 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 no. The police car might mean that they need the police to help them. The eyes might mean that someone is watching them. Oh, yeah, totally. And that lipstick emoji means the chap lips lady from SpongeBob is the wife of the man who kidnapped him. And the cake emoji shows the kidnapper forces them to eat cake every single day. And that poop emoji, well, it shows the aftermath of eating all that cake every day. You can make these emojis mean whatever you want it to mean. That's what confirmation bias is. All right, so for the last video, we got Inca Star needs help. Part three. I don't know what parts one or two were, but considering that this is the second sequel, I mean, it's gotta be good. Hey everyone, today I'm gonna be talking about Incaster. The <laughs> Jeez, what was that? Just jump scare out of nowhere. I'm gonna show y'all some stuff that they do and signs that they need help. Here is one of their videos. Norm
normal right, but that is until you slow it down in the beginning. As you can see it looks like one of the girls were trying to pick the police one and the other girl didn't let her. Oh my god. Okay, first of all, I, I don't know if y'all realize, like I don't know if you actually make TikToks, but when you're making the TikTok, like you got your camera on, you press record, you don't see any of those emojis or text in the background. When you're recording, it's ju just a blank screen, all you see is yourself. You gotta put all those emojis after you're done filming the video. I don't know if y'all know, but the emoji movie is not real. It is fictional. You don't have emoji just floating all around you. If you look at another one of their videos, just look real closely. No, 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 no. If you zoom in and slow it down, it looks like she hasn't slept in days, and she's using makeup to cover the bags now. Where? Where am I looking? Where are these bags you're talking about? I mean, clearly not in my wallet because I'm a rogue boy. But I mean, even then, baggy eyes, like they're a common thing that affect about 27% of people. Trust me, I get my beauty sleep. I sleep like a princess, but even I have baggy eyes. But yeah, totally. Girls only wear makeup to cover up their baggy eyes. Also, if you see the other girl's hand, it looks like she has a bruise on her hand. Bitch, where? Bitch, where? Uh, I, I'm done with these videos. I, I I can't. I'm continuing to get brain damage. For what? All right, so my overall thoughts on Star and Mimi Cliffy, I find the entire thing to be ironic because if they really were kidnapped and were forced to make videos, y'all commenting on their videos, viewing them, sharing them, making videos about them, it's only making them more popular and getting their TikToks more and more views, which at the end of the day would help this apparent kidnapper get more money. And on top of that, don't forget that Star is verified and in order to do so, you have to submit a photo identification like a driver's license or passport. I'm just gonna flat out say it. I don't think Inglestar and Mimi Cliffy are kidnapped. But my problem with people thinking these two girls are kidnapped is that it takes the seriousness out of people who are actually in danger. People convince themselves that making TikToks and showing a lack of emotion and not blinking means that you're kidnapped. But by saying that, does that mean if you don't have TikTok, you can't be kidnapped? The reality is you can be smiling on the outside, but it doesn't mean you're okay in the inside. I don't believe these girls are kidnapped because it just doesn't make any sense. Why would they have access to a phone and social media, but not tell people that they're kidnapped or call the police? If children, people who think the Easter Bunny is real totally is. Don't you think that the kidnapper themselves would clue in to what's going on and not let them post, you know, all, all this evidence? And if the apparent kidnapper was making money, you've got to link your credit card. And then when it comes to doing taxes, I mean, you got to put all your personal information on there. You take a look at their Instagram and they're living normal lives out in public, surrounded by dozens and dozens of people. People fail to understand that social media isn't real. There's a thing called acting. That is exactly what these two girls are doing. It is nothing different than watching a movie on Netflix. At the end of the day, they're making videos for your or entertainment and what these kids are doing it's not a bad thing by any means they they have good in their hearts and you know I, I i really respect that but at the end of the day it really does create some problematic beliefs because then you're gonna be thinking that people who are smiling are not in danger and are not sad and don't need help at the end of the day, trauma looks different in everyone. But anyways, with all this being said, I want to know your thoughts on Inca Star, Mimi Cliffy, and this whole kidnap conspiracy theory. Let me know. Also, if you're both educated and entertained, please consider leaving a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. But anyway, guys, that's officially going to do it. So until next time, it's been Ivan Steph. Peace. So it's been over two months since I talked about Inga Star and Mimi Cliffy, a TikTok sister duo based in Russia. They've gone viral over the recent years for one reason and one reason only, because millions of people think that they're kidnapped. And when I say people, I mean kids. The same kids who believe unicorns are real have gone full detective mode on these two girls. You've got kids that are convinced Inga Star is a robot, that the two of them are AI, and I've even seen comments of people thinking that Inka Star isn't actually Inka Star, but actually a man wearing a mask. But I'm being honest, part of the reason why this video took two months to make is because reading these comments, it seriously hurts my brain. It is scary how easily kids on the internet are persuaded and believe in the most ridiculous theories. And this is why we need age restrictions on social media. So for today's video, it's gonna follow the same structure that my other kidnapping conspiracy theory videos have. We're gonna start off by reacting to some wannabe detective videos and then we're gonna transition into what I uncovered about Inca Star and Mimic Cliffy, including some cooking videos of them talking and even their location. Inca Star and Mimic Cliffy need help. Here's some proof. The ears are covering up the bruises. Mimic Cliffy is wearing headphones to cover up the bruises too. If you look closely at the end, you will see that Incaster is trying to say help, help, look. Please help these girls. We cannot do it without you guys' support. Hope y'all enjoyed.
Bye. Oh God, how old is this kid? Five? Oh, shut up, you Mickey Mouse. Damn, y'all in the comments are ruthless. Not for real though, because you want to wear big pointy ears as part of a cosplay, it means you're kidnapped. Wait, hold on a second. If pointy ears means you're kidnapped, does that mean Santa Claus is actually a kidnapper? Okay, for y'all trying to graduate from detective school, if you're trying to prove something, then you gotta prove it. Inka and Mimi have worn those elf ears in dozens and dozens of videos. It's just part of their cosplay performance. It's not enough for you to say that there's bruises under those ears. You gotta show us those bruises. Countless times on my channel, I've explained the term confirmation bias. Sure, she's wearing headphones, but it doesn't mean she's got bruises under her ears. I mean, she could be wearing headphones to cover up her extremely hairy ears, the snake living in her ear, or she could be hiding nothing at all and is just wearing headphones for style. But the last proof that they show is scary because it goes to show how people's biases interfere with their ability to see what is clearly right in front of them. Incaster is trying to say help, help, look. What? People see what they want to see. It's the same idea as those pictures where you can see either a man or a woman, depending what your mind is thinking of. In the video, she's literally just saying the song. And if she was saying help, then she would have to say the letter P, which requires her to close and open her lips. You can't say P without closing your lips. You know what? I am done with this one. If I was to give that wannabe detective a letter grade, I would give them a P minus. In Casta. In Casta needs help. Here is the proof. Look at Christina's face. And behind them, I think it's the kidnapper. Boy, if you don't... <laughs> what? Yeah, totally. Because the kidnapper will put themselves on camera for millions of people to see. Bro, that's literally a coat rack with the code on it. Bro, I, I get it. They're kids like I was once a kid. But if they're this dumb, they shouldn't be on social media. Time for the next video. You see her noise is hurt. <laughs> Yes, Inca Star's noise is hurt. So for those who don't know, there's something called a nose job. The actual surgery is called rhinoplasty and is a cosmetic procedure to alter and reconstruct the nose. And it can do people wonders. Here's a random picture I found of someone before rhinoplasty and after rhinoplasty. Literally every female celebrity and even a lot of male celebrities have gotten rhinoplasty. As a matter of fact, back in May, I got septal rhinoplasty to fix my breathing issues from when I broke my nose as a little kid. I was puffy, bruised, and looked worse than SpongeBob in that one scene, but no, I wasn't puffy punched in the face by some kidnapping man. Now what's even more concerning about the clip that we just looked at is someone in the comments really just said, guys, is it just me or the second video, the audio sounded like it was saying, please help me, help me. I like, bro, I, I'm getting too overworked for what? Reading hundreds and hundreds of just silly comments like that, it hurts your brain, it really does. For real, some of these theories are absolutely ridiculous. The caption in this other video that I found says, I was watching Ingostar and Mimikuffy again, and this time I saw something else. And you know what they found while analyzing that video? A pair of sunglasses. Dude, what? Then I guess every single person who wears sunglasses at the beach is a kidnapper. I mean, it's 2023 in the whole canceling era. I guess sunglasses are officially canceled. Mm. So if you think it couldn't get any dumber than this, while well, you're wrong because I found a TikTok and just take a look at this. What's that? It looks like a man's head. Her tongue have two colors. If both girls had their hands in the photo, who took their photo? It looks like there are two people. Christina and someone with a mask. No, 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 no. Bro, what the fact that this video got 22,000 likes, it boggles my mind. I mean, this person must have some supervision because all I see is just the black circle. The thing that you see is a ring like the black circle you're probably seeing is, well, the lens. But second of all, what does her tongue have to do with any of this? Her tongue have two colors. Is this what detective school is now teaching y'all? It first started off with analyzing the reflection in people's eyes, but now you're analyzing people's tongues? Like, bro, what? What does a long tongue say about this Guinness World Record holder? Or better yet, maybe Inca Star was actually kidnapped by a frog who captured her with his tongue. All right, so now that we've analyzed a few wannabe detective videos, I think we can safely say that all those people 
Well, they all failed detective school. Elastigirl from The Incredibles must be jealous because these wannabe detectives are reaching with their theories further than she could ever reach with their arms. If you were kidnapped and your face was flooded on social media with hundreds of millions of views each and every single month, then why have no friends, parents, former teachers, you name it, reported them to the police? And not to forget that social media is heavily tracked. Police are easily able to find your IP address. Anyways, with all this being said, for the second half of this video, I wanna take a deeper dive into looking at who Inga Star and Mimi Cliffy really are. I did some digging and found them on a Russian video platform called RuTube where they make literal cooking videos. In these videos you can hear them talking and cooking a whole bunch of different food. And their Russian audience actually have a brain because no one in the comments is saying anything about them being kidnapped. Now you might be asking why don't they make these cooking videos on TikTok or YouTube? Well, it's because it's not what blew them up. Y'all are so gullible thinking that they're kidnapped and are making these two girls so much money. And they're clearly playing into it, always using the no sleep filter on TikTok, making it look like they're sleep deprived. So as discussed in my previous video about these two, their Instagram looked a lot different than the TikTok and YouTube videos that they post. Taking a look at Inga Star's feed, she's been at an amusement park, a beach, a castle, and even a concert, which if her kidnapper was to take her there, would be the easiest place to run away. Just imagine Inga Star was at a Taylor Swift concert Good luck finding her. And Mimi Cuffy's feed is the same. She's got pictures at a beach, an amusement park, and even this photo surrounded by hundreds of people. There's videos of her taking pole dancing lessons with other people. There's even a video that contains photos of Mimi Cliffy as a child. If you're going out in public doing what you want and are surrounded by countless people and are posting photos and videos of all of this with your own cell phone, well then you're not kidnapped. And going back to Inka, she's got a lot of photos of this boy, which according to the comments is Inka's son. He's been to a Lego store, a mall where he played VR games and a go-kart place. Now with what I'm about to show next, it really puts the icing on the cake and it goes to show that either this is the world's dumbest kidnapper or you could, I guess, technically argue the, the most genius kidnapper, but Anyway, well, let's get into it. So on her highlight, she's got one called Artemy, which is the name of the boy. You look at the fourth photo and you can see he got a haircut at some place called Gocha Haircuts. On my phone, I took a look at their profile and you can see that they have their business address listed that's located in St. Petersburg, Russia. And when I saw that city, I'm like, wait, hold up, that's familiar because I remember seeing that city somewhere else. It's because when I was scrolling through her highlights, Inka Star has a video with another content creator with a tag location at a port in St. Petersburg. I was doing some more digging and found this photo that Inka Star posted was taken outside St. Isaac's Cathedral in St. Petersburg, Russia. I also found that this photo was taken outside of Cathedral of Our Lady of Kazan in St. Petersburg, Russia. And you see the water and buildings in the background of this photo. It's also located in St. Petersburg. And here's a picture she posted in Divo Ostrov Amusing Park in St. Petersburg, Russia. Everything, it's all connected. Nearly every photo and video was taken in the city of St. Petersburg in Russia. The point being is that if Inga Star and Mimic Cliffy really were kidnapped, the kidnapper would be an absolute dummy head to share all these photos and videos where you can easily see where they're located. At this point, if they were really kidnapped or in danger and didn't already try to easily run away, I mean, the police would easily find their location. I did study psychology and criminology, but still, like, that was just four years of university. Like, people, like, you know, actual detectives who are a lot smarter than me, I mean, they would have found them by now if they really were kidnapped. And moving forward, I also found out that Inga Star and Mimic Cliffy are part of a PR company called Faces, who also worked with a bunch of other content creators in Russia. Here's a post that they made for Mimic Cliffy, which I translated, and here's a post that they made for Inka Star. If they really were kidnapped, then how are they part of a PR group? And if they were kidnapped, then why have none of these other creators part of the PR group contacted the police. Well, shocker, it's because Inga Star and Mimi Cliffy aren't actually kidnapped. I got such a headache making this video because literally no one believes that these two TikTokers are kidnapped other than kids. But I do feel like this video, in addition to the ones I made on Bebop and BB, were necessary to make because this whole kidnap conspiracy theory, it creates a lot of problematic beliefs. These kids are led to believe that only a stranger, a man, is capable of kidnapping and hurting girls when in reality, it can be anyone. This video that Mimic Cliffy posted on TikTok contains some guy, I don't know, it could be her boyfriend, a friend, a brother, a cousin. I really don't know, to be honest. In the video, Mimic Cliffy was acting with some other dude, but the comments were flooded with people thinking that this is the kidnapper. Number one, people need to be careful with falsely accusing someone, but number two, it takes away attention from those who are actually 
capable of doing damage. Just because someone makes lip syncing and emoji dancing videos on TikTok doesn't mean they're kidnapped. And someone who is kidnapped or is in danger likely doesn't have TikTok or even a phone. Inga Star, Mimic Cliffy, even Beepop and BB worrying so much about these people, the whole kidnap conspiracy theory, it takes away attention from those who are actually in danger and in need of help. I've made two videos about Beepop and BB and try to show y'all that it's not some imaginary man that y'all need to be worried about. It's her own mother with a dark past who is exploiting her daughter by faking a kidnapping for money. Now before we wrap up this video, I do have something that I want to show y'all. So for those who don't know, I do have a second channel and about a month ago, I hit 100,000 subscribers on it. As someone who dreamed about becoming a YouTuber and having a platform online, you know, since a child I was, I was probably making videos at eight years old. It finally, like I finally hit 100,000 and well, this block came in and uh, look at that, look at that beat. <coughs> I need water. <coughs> I am, I am beyond grateful for this. Like it is, I'm still in disbelief. Like it is right here, but like, I can't believe that YouTube sent me this thing. It says presented to Ivan Steph Shorts for passing 100,000 subscribers. It, it is crazy. I, I gotta hang it up on my wall somewhere. I, I really don't know, I'm trying to figure it out. But yes, I really like to thank you guys. Even if you're not subscribed to my second channel, you just being here on my main channel, it, it helps everything. And it truly does mean a lot. Like I, I love you all, I truly do. Anyway guys, that's officially gonna do it for this video. I try to make this video both entertaining and educational. And if I was successful, please consider leaving a like and subscribe if you haven't already. So until next time, it's been Ivan Steph. Peace. This is a story about a mother who exploited her daughter on TikTok by faking her kidnapping and abuse so that she could become internet famous and get some good money out of it. Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's Ivan Steph and you guys. Damn, I haven't said that for a long time. My upload schedule has been straight garbage, but I came across this one TikTok account with rumors of a girl being kidnapped, and you already know I had to make a video about it. Today, we're gonna be talking about this TikTok account named Beepop and Bebe, who are a mother and daughter duo that make cosplay videos, often lip syncing and dancing to popular songs. And at a first glance, nothing seems too off. I'm just a little bit caught in the middle but then... Nah, nah, I'm kidding. But for real though, whether or not the rumors which we will be discussing are true or not, this account raises some serious red flags. And not just this account, but many child TikTokers and YouTubers have some pretty dark stuff going on behind the scenes. We all remember the good old days when Lil Tay, the youngest flexor of the century, was around, and we all found out that it was her brother who forced her to make these videos. Oh, wait. Go back, go back and say like, no, you, you, you broke, broke. Then she went completely ghost, only to return a few years later when her brother faked her being abused by her father and ran a GoFundMe scam, which I did make a video about exposing him for it. And since then, they disappeared yet again. And we got the case of Piper Raquel's mom, where back in January, the parents of 11 kids, part of Piper Raquel's old squad, sued her mom, Tiffany, and Tiffany's boyfriend for a long list of things, including physical, emotional, verbal, and S abuse, as well as financial exploitation. When you read into specifics, of the article, it gets pretty nasty. And just recently, a trial date was set for April 17, 2023. Honestly, these exploited social media children are gonna grow up with a terrible fear of cameras, just like little Albert was with white rats. Now, for those who have never taken a psychology class and don't know who little Albert is, basically it was an experiment where they made this baby Albert scared of a white rat, which ended up spreading into a fear of almost everything that is white. Now, where I'm going with this is that if these exploited children thought one camera was scary enough, Apple said a big fuck you and not only made one more, but two more cameras on their iPhone 12 Pro Max. If these children grow up one day to have camera phobia or whatever you would call it, seriously, this they are in for an absolute ride. So Lil Tay and Piper Raquel are only two examples of the countless children on TikTok and YouTube who are exploited for views and have frightening things going on behind the scenes, but Beepop and Bebe are no different. In the last one to two months, Beepop and Bebe have more than double their followers for one reason and one reason only because people think they, more specifically the child, Beepop, are in danger. When I look at their TikToks, the first thing that catches my eye is the heavy amount of highlighter they use on their nose. Honestly, the mom looks like she's attempting to be Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, except if he lives in a desert instead of the North Pole, and except if instead of giving children presents, he exploited them. Okay, but jokes aside, they posted some seriously questionable content. For example, take a look at this TikTok here. At first, it might appear normal, just a girl dressed up in a police Halloween costume. But 
the thing is, she's wearing a choker, which gives the costume an entire new meaning. Now for a mother or whoever choreographed that video to sexualize a child for views, it's just wrong. They also made another video which offended a lot of East Asians. Take a look. I do for you, long better. <laughs> All right, fine, I'll have long nails, thanks. It's okay, honey, only $4 more, that's okay. Honey, do you like crypto gel for your nail? It's the best thing you can have for your nail. Make look nice, it sparkle like diamond in the sky. Do you like crypto gel? I mean, come on, just look at the hair, the outfit, the over-exaggerated facial expressions. This type of content is controversial and it is best not to force your daughter to make these types of videos and stay away from this sort of stuff because it can lead to some negative consequences in the future. And this wasn't the only video. Here's another one. I was just a girl from the hood, I was doing all right. Then this girl ran up and said she wanted to fight had to turn around and ask if she's all right because clearly she don't know. wearing that wig is one thing but when you accompany it with the audio that they use just like why as you can see from the comments a lot of people were not happy with this and just put the variable out there that they didn't originally know this was offensive and they had good intentions by making this video it doesn't matter because they kept the video up despite the backlash they got in the comments. And they kept them up because they know it will stir up the pot and at the end of the day, negative attention still is attention and this is how the mother makes her money. So one of the first things you notice when you click on literally any of their TikToks are comments like wear red or green if you are being kidnapped or trapped in your next video. If they are in danger, they should dress in black. Wear purple in your next video if you need help. The comment section of every single of their TikToks are spam with things like this. And what do you know if you look at their next video, they are wearing one of the colors that someone commented. Oh no, Inspector Gadget solved the case. Somebody please call Paw Patrol because they are in danger. You know, it doesn't take a genius to know that when literally every single color in the rainbow and beyond is commented they are bound to wear one of them at this point people in the comments are asking them to wear completely nothing and post actual child pee to prove that they are not kidnapped and it doesn't help that these comments contradict themselves for example this comment says wear blue if you're safe but this comment on the same video says wear blue if you're kidnapped on another video blue is okay but blue also means in danger of death and the issue is a lot of people mainly children ignore the contradicting comments and prioritize the ones that confirm their belief it's called confirmation bias which is essentially the tendency to accept information that supports your beliefs while dismissing information that contradicts it. For example, one comment on a video says, if you are in danger, dress as a minion. And what do you know, their next video is a minions video. Wow, isn't that all the proof that we need? Well, no, 10 seconds of looking at timestamps will tell you this. That's because that comment was made after the minions video was already posted because people are trying to fuel up this thing and get the attention they ever so desire. And just take a second to think about the concept of wearing a color to show that you're in danger. Number one, why would this apparent kidnapper give them access to a phone? that has access to social media. And number two, if they can read the comments and reply to them, why wouldn't they just reply to someone and say, help, I am in danger, this is my address, or I mean, better yet, they can just call the police themselves. Don't get me wrong, I can understand eight-year-olds falling for this, but teenagers and even sometimes adults, it's pathetic. People watch this two episodes of Law & Order and now think they're a certified detective. People have been doing some digging looking for any clues that prove Bebop is kidnapped. And they found one video that I want y'all to check out because it is absolutely terrifying. They need our help. Oh my god. Oh my god. Did y'all see the hidden message? It is so crazy that people don't see the name of the TikTok account. Take a look and you'll see that it says Beepop and Bebe dot spam. So it is clearly not real. Oh, but it's actually their second account. No, no, it's not. And even if it was real, just think about it for a sec. Why would they use a second account with less followers? to alert people that they are actually in danger and need of help. Like why wouldn't they use their main account where they could reach out to more people? And more importantly, like this should be kind of an obvious, why would their kidnapper give them access to TikTok and let them post these videos alerting people? And it takes just five seconds to search up Beepop and Bebe's account and read their bio where it clearly says only account. This happens way too often. I don't know if y'all heard of George Mason, how he tricked the internet into thinking he was Harry Styles. If you haven't watched it, I absolutely recommend it because it showcases just how easily people will fall for a fake identity. 
The TikTok army of wannabe Sherlock's are so dedicated to their job of confirmation bias that they have found something absolutely terrifying. I have a question for y'all watching the video right now. Do you know what a door is? Like, like this thing, like, you know, right behind me. E even here, I got a door too. And I got like one over there as well. You know, like the large re rectangular thing that you can open and close, you know, gives you a bit of privacy, that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, the Sherlock army on TikTok have found that the room that Bebop and Bebe film in has a door with a lock on it. Look, I may have a straight face right now, but trust me, when I first saw that TikTok, I couldn't help out but burst out laughing, which doesn't happen easily. Tell me, exp explain to me, please. How are you gonna be locked in when you can literally unlock the door yourself? Seriously, what kind of houses do these people on TikTok have that all of a sudden having a lock on a door means you're kidnapped? And the wannabe detectives get even dumber than this. Take a look. Bro, are you blind? Are you dumb? Or are you blum? What do you mean no doorknob? It's literally right there. Would it help if I... Here, do you want me to... Or how about... Nah, like for real, this is actually stupid. Now I know this might surprise y'all, but having a lock on a door is a common thing. And even people with a large following like Anna Oop have been fueling this crazy theory by saying having a lock on a door is somehow evidence of a kidnapping. And on top of all of this, there are also latches and locks on the bedroom door, which isn't something that most kids have. Even just by looking at things on the surface, it's easy to see that something sketchy is going on behind the scenes. But if you actually look at the door without anything cover it, you can clearly see that it's not a bedroom door. It's a door that leads to what looks like a patio outside. I think many people don't realize that Beepop probably doesn't actually sleep in this room. Let's be real, who actually sleeps in a room that looks like this other than in Disney and Pixar movies? It's most likely a set. So, people have been searching for clues, looking for absolutely everything and anything that points to Beepop being kidnapped. There's one TikTok that caught a lot of people's attention and I want y'all to take a look. Oh my god, no. No, it can't be. She's... She's holding a book. You know, I grew up loving mystery books. Okay, okay that, that's a lie because I didn't actually like reading much as a kid. I much prefer movies over books. But my point being is just because I like watching mystery movies does not mean a man is behind this camera forcing me to make this YouTube video that you're currently watching. But of course, if you read the comment section, people are freaking out saying it's a clue that Beep Bop is also a major unsolved crime. And then you got this comment here, the book and tape. Since it's supposed to be about brushing your teeth, it might actually be them not being able to speak up their mouth. Yo, okay, now that's actually some deep shit. Like if I saw that metaphor in a music video or a movie that I was watching, I would heavily fuck with it. But that's the thing, a movie or a music video. To be honest, at this point, Beepop and Bebe are playing everyone. They've definitely seen all the crazy theories people are commenting and making videos about and are playing into it to get a reaction. And everyone is falling for it. And now we get to the topic of what has really fueled this conspiracy theory and it's got everyone worried for Beepop's safety. Many people believe that Beepop is actually a kidnapped child from several years ago. There's two missing children in particular that many people have or still do believe is Beepop from years ago. The first one being Aranza. According to the FBI's website, Aranza was taken from her mother at a mall in Vancouver, Washington in 2018, making her only four years old. Her mother was taken into custody in September 2019 in Mexico, but Aranza couldn't be found and to this day, it is believed that she is somewhere in Mexico. Now, there isn't really much detail to the case that points towards this being Beep Bop, other than the fact that for some reason people think this girl looks like Beep Bop, which I don't get how because first of all, this girl has blue eyes, but Beep Bop on the other hand has more like a brown or hazel eyes. And here's another picture and like where, like where do you see the resemblance? I found a video on TikTok that shows old pictures of Beep Bop from 2017 and 2018 on her mom's Facebook account and I want y'all to take a look. Here is a picture of Beep Bop in 2017 with her brother Peyton. Here are some more pictures of Bebop before Aranza Ochoa Lopez's disappearance on October 25th, 2018. This
first picture of Bebop was uploaded to days before Aranda Ochoa Lopez went missing. Bebop was around the same age of that picture of Aranza, and they look nothing alike. Speaking of not looking alike, here's a picture of the missing child's mother. Here's another one. And as you can see, she looks absolutely nothing like Bebe at all, but somehow people on TikTok are convinced that this is Bebe. What? Unless she pulled a Michael Jackson by making her skin white and changing her entire facial structure, this is not her. And finally, we're gonna be discussing the second child, which a lot of people are convinced is actually Bebop, Ava Baldwin. She was born in 2009 and went missing in 2015 after her mother, Catherine Baldwin, took her. So the two of them haven't been seen since 2015, but thanks to Take Dot, there's some new information coming forward that is now being investigated. You guessed it, people are now thinking that Bebop and Bebe are actually Ava and Catherine Baldwin. No, I'm not even gonna lie here. When I look at the pictures, Bebop, I mean, I can maybe kind of see a resemblance, not too much though. And the thing is, their ages don't really match up. Ava was born in 2009, making her 13 years old today, roughly in the eighth grade. But Bebop doesn't look 13 at all. At least to me, she looks like she could be 10 years old. And we've seen the photos of Bebop from 2017 where she looks like she could be maybe four or five years old. So the ages for Ava and Bebop just don't match up. But Bebe on the other hand, my God. I have to admit that looks a lot like her. Now it does not mean that this is her by any means. Doppelgangers are a thing, we know this. But seven years have passed since Ava and Catherine have been seen. And if Catherine did get some facial surgery, maybe gained or lost some weight. And also in her TikTok, she does look like she's wearing contacts. And it has been so worthy of attention that Ava Baldwin's father has actually been made aware of this and has been discussing this with a lot of people, a lot of people on TikTok. And it's been announced that apparently the authorities are investigating this new information. Even though Catherine and Bebe do disturbingly look quite a bit alike, I don't know, I, I feel like this is probably not her because it just doesn't make sense to me. Just think about it. You kidnap your daughter, change your entire identity and everything, and then years later, you are filming you with her on TikTok to go viral. Now you know with all these crazy theory videos that everyone's making, all these crazy theories that everyone's commenting, and you don't try to dismiss any of them, and you're playing into them, fueling the fire, it just doesn't make much sense. Or actually one could also argue that this is a genius move because she's making it seem so obvious that people might just look the other way because of it. But I don't know what you guys think. Let me know, do you think Bebop and Bebe are kidnapped? I personally don't, but regardless of kidnapping or no kidnapping, there is no doubt that this child is being exploited and is in need of help regardless. Now, I wanna take you guys back a few years ago, back on YouTube, when people did more reaching than Reed Richards himself. When people were looking at Marina Joyce's videos and started you know, analyzing this a little way too much and genuinely thought that she was kidnapped. So it's, it's just like a similar thing here. People will see what they want to see. But anyway, guys, that's officially going to do it for this video. I hope by making this video, I can just, you know, get more attention out there, which is the dangers of parents exploiting their children. And also, in the case of this is a kidnapped child or any of that, I, I just wanted to use my platform, hopefully for some good. But anyways, that's officially going to do it for this video. If you did enjoy, please consider leaving a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. But until next time, it's been Ivan Steph. Peace. Meet Bebop and BB, a mother-daughter duo who make cosplay videos that often involve lip syncing, hand dancing, and popular songs. At first, nothing seems off, just a mother and daughter having fun and making cute videos together. But then you take a look at their comments and they are flooded with comments such as, we're red in the next video if you need help, we're green in the next video if you need help, we're blue in the next video if you need help, we're purple in the next video if you're in danger, we're yellow if you're in danger. I mean, at this point, unless Bebop and BB just don't wear clothes and post literal corn on the cob, if you know what I mean, I guess they're kidnapped. And speaking of BB and corn on the cob, I found a theory on who people think BB was in the past and it will absolutely shock you. So this is my second time talking about these TikTokers. I previously made a video in August of last year where I explained who they are, debunked the whole color commenting thing, and debunked some other things such as having a lock on a door. And yeah, people really think that having a lock on a door that leads outside is evidence that you're kidnapped. So in that video I made, I looked at two theories on who people think Bebop could possibly be, the first one being Aranza Lopez and the other being Ava Baldwin. And since then, there's been an update on Aranza who was thankfully found safe in Mexico in February of this year after being kidnapped back in 2018. So for this video that you're watching today is going to follow the same structure. We're going to start off by reacting to and debunking some wannabe Sherlock Holmes and then we're going to transition into two theories on who people think BB could actually be. The first one being an ex-convict who was arrested for a series of crimes and the second one as I said will absolutely shock you. So without further ado let's take a look at what some wannabe Sherlock Holmes have to say. Proof the Bob and Bib need help.
What am I looking at? Nostrils? So let me get this straight. Because Beepop has not only one, but two nostrils, it means she's kidnapped? Or oh, just wait until you find out about that guy on TikTok who has gigantic nostrils that literally look like a spaceship landed in that thing. I mean, considering the size of them nostrils, he must have been kidnapped by the ultimate boss. <laughs> Okay, so taking a look at the top comment, it appears Beep Bop has a nosebleed. Wait, I understand. She is nosebleed. Yes, Beep Bop is nosebleed. You know the little red stuff that drips out of your nose after you pick at it or in hot and dry summer? Well, it turns out those things are actually little Beep Bops. Okay, but on a real note, people are claiming that they see blood on Beep Bop's nose. Seriously though, where? Last time I checked, a nosebleed runs down your nose, not up. I think what they in the comments are talking about is that Beep Bop's left nostril looks slightly different than the one on her right. The comments believe that Beep Bop was punched in the face by the man who forces them to make videos and has a nosebleed because of it. Yeah, it makes total sense that although she got punched in the face, she doesn't have a swollen nose or eyes. Taking a look at some of their other videos, it's just the way Bebop's nose is shaped. Her left nostril ends a little lower than the one on her right. It's as simple as that. Taking a look at the comments, people are really reaching. Someone who thinks Bebop is a little boy said in his eyeballs, there is also someone who is holding a piece of wood or other sharp object and it looks like he's being forced if he doesn't want to. I said bitch where? Bitch where? There definitely is something reflecting in her eyes. The phone and the tripod that it's standing on. That's like saying something's reflecting in my eyes. Yeah, what, what do you think? Look, ring light and camera. Some of y'all have some really strange imaginations. I just know that a psychotherapist would have a field day psychoanalyzing y'all. So the next video that I want to take a look at comes from YouTube Shorts and it's called Beep Bop and BB Need Help. And for those who watch my video on Inca Star Mimic Clip, you would know that I'm actually happy to see a normal sounding title. Beep Bop and BB. Beep Bop and BB been kidnapped. This is a proof. A speaker on the room. A tears. And comments. And they wear it. A lock on their door. Handcuff. BB's brother looks us. That's it, I see guys plus help theme. Okay, so there's a few things we need to talk about here. First of all, I've seen so many people talking about this speaker that they see in the top corner of the room. From what I understand, people think that the kidnapper uses this speaker so they can hear what Beep Bop and BB are saying within the room. <sighs> I can't believe I even need to explain this, but here I go. Y'all know what a speaker is, right? Like the little, sometimes big, rectangular, or even square thing that has little dots on it. They are what you call an output device. They connect with another system and play the audio coming from there, often music. Now this is not the same same as a microphone. A microphone is an input device which takes in sound and needs an output device in order to play that audio. So basically what I'm trying to say is that a speaker can't record audio. It only plays audio. Now for the second thing which I addressed in my first video. How are you going to be locked in the room when the lock is on the inside? Oh, hold on. Let me, let me, let me show you guys something. And for the third thing, BB's brother looks us. I mean, that's just flat out rude. Okay, so now I want to transition into the second half of this video, of which the title is based on. Beep Bob and BB are not who you think they are. As we discussed in this video and the one prior, many people think that Beep Bob and BB are in danger by some kidnapper. In some videos, you can see this man, and people think that he could be the kidnapper and forcing him to make videos. Someone, please, please explain to me why on earth would a kidnapper put themselves on camera? How does that make any sense? Y'all are really making Harry and Lloyd and Harry and Marv look like absolute geniuses. In this video and the one prior, I've attempted to debunk the whole kidnap conspiracy theory, and that's not to say that Beep Bob isn't in danger, because she is in danger, but it's not from some invisible man. In my previous video, I talked about two theories of Beep Bop being either one of two missing children, Aranza Lopez and Ava Baldwin. But for this video, we're going to be taking a look at two theories on who BB could possibly be. The first one I'm honestly pretty convinced is her, and the second one I'm iffy about, but if it is in fact her, it changes everything about Beep Bop and BB. Okay, so before we begin, I just want to note that everything I'm about to discuss has already been made available online publicly through social media accounts and public court records. The people or person I'm about to discuss is not 100% BB, but some people on the internet and myself are fairly convinced is her. If it is in fact her, this is going to change everything about Beep Bop and BB, but honestly, by fueling a kidnapped conspiracy theory and using your daughter for profit and exploiting her, I mean BB... You kind of asked for it. So the first person that we're going to be taking a look at goes by the name of Diane Patricia Evans, who is an ex-convict. Yes, ex-convict. You heard that right. I was doing a deep dive on the internet and found myself on Reddit where I found some really interesting stuff. Reddit and even some users on TikTok believe BB's real name to be Diane Patricia Evans. Of course, I'm not going to believe the words of other people, so I did some digging. Things are about to get complicated, so pay close attention. So you may have seen this woman who appears in a few of their videos who looks like she appeared straight out of the Adams family. So this woman turns out to be Beep Bop's grandma, evident by the fact that they posted 
posted this video with BB making the caption, my mom. So thanks to Reddit and doing my own research, I found out that this woman's name is Lisa Evans. I took a look at her feed and there's a really creepy video of her laying down and saying what appears to be, help me. Help me, help me. Um, it doesn't seem like she's very active online, so I did some more digging and found someone named Darla Evans who has a pretty hefty friends list. Taking a look, this person is friends with a Brandy Evans and a David Evans who is an owner, manager, CEO at Swimming Pool Services. Now, why does this Wednesday gone wrong and these mutual friends matter? Well, you're about to find out. Beep Bop has a Spotify account that goes by the name of Beep Bop Bardo. So I Googled that name and found Beep Bop Bardo LLC, which stands for Limited Liability Company. I looked at the other Google results and found another company called Beep Bop and BB LLC, both both of which are based in Georgia. So with that being said, Bebop isn't just a regular 10 year old girl who makes TikToks simply for fun with her mom. Her family built entire companies based off her. So taking a look at Bebop and BB LLC, there is a registered agent by the name of Donald Evans. Wait a second, Evans? Didn't we just see that name four times? Yes, we did. And this Donald Evans also owns a swimming pool company. So Lisa only has two friends, one of which is Donald Evans, the guy who runs the Bebop company and also happens to be BB's brother as seen in many YouTube videos and Instagram posts. I clicked on his most recent photo and found a comment by Darla that says good pick brother. If Darla, Donald, and BB are siblings, the question remains, what is BB's real name? So with that being said, I took a look at Donald's friends list, but I couldn't find a Diane Patricia Evans. I did some more digging and couldn't find much except for a post which contained a photo shared by a Diane Patricia. I zoomed in on the photo and can see what looks like a man on the left, a child in the middle, and a woman on the right. Now, since I had to hyper zoom this photo, it is very blurry and it is hard to see, but taking a look, her white facial complexion, blonde hair, and the length of the hair, it definitely resembles BB. Now is this Diane person actually BB? Well as I've said a lot of people are claiming her to be. I tried to find this account and it appears that it has been deleted because none of these Evans people are friends with the Diane Patricia Evans. Now the question remains why does this even matter? Well I searched up the public court records for the state of Georgia and what do you know I found a Diane P. Evans of which is related to the people who we already know are related to BB such as Brandy, Donald and Lisa. I took a look at this report and found a long list of charges such as speeding, fraud, battery, conduct and criminal trespassing. The post that I found on Reddit looked on another website and found domestic V with children and contributing to the delinquency of a minor. This is absolutely shocking. Now this is not to say that ex-convicts can turn their life around and be better people and become good parents. For four years I studied psychology and criminology and I'm a big believer that people can change for the better. But considering this kidnapped conspiracy theory and BB's need to fuel this theory by exploiting her daughter for profit, it's important information to consider. Someone with such a large record who was clearly fueling people's fears for her own daughter's and kidnapping, it raises some serious red flags. So now that we've looked at this Diane Patricia Evans person, it's time to look at one more. This person that we're about to look at isn't as likely BB. It's more of a conspiracy theory that people believe to be her, but I'm gonna supply you guys with evidence and you're entitled to figure it out for yourself. So as I was doing some digging, I found myself onto Reddit once again and found a theory on who people think BB could have been in the past. Someone named Colette Dupree, who is a corn on the cop star. Obviously, I can't show you the full photos, but just know that for research purposes, I looked at these photos and burned my own eyes alive. Now, what I can show you are several pictures of her face. These pictures are from 1997 to 2000, so they are about 25 years old, meaning that if Diane Evans is this person, she would be about 24 years old in these photos, which does look right. Now taking a look at these photos and keep in mind they're from about 25 years ago, it does kind of look like BB. I also found a picture from a magazine that Colette was in and her hair even parts the same as BB on the left side. I found a video of Colette on YouTube in an episode that she appeared in on the Jenny Jones show and take a look. You are listening to what I said because I am a book of knowledge on play. Oh, I couldn't even tell you. Probably 500 for every hair on my head. 500. Where is it at? You're no man. You're a toothpick. I'd break you. I know you when you're huge. After seeing this clip and watching some of BB's live streams, they even have the same temper tantrum. To be on live because they're not alive me. Like, girl, Princess Diana was like everywhere. The world loved her. We all watched her. Still something happened to her. So don't even think your little self right there. I'm getting threats. I'm getting threats. You ain't getting no threats. You sending yourself threats. That's what's going on. You think you're better than Princess Diana? You ain't no Princess Diana. You ain't no Princess Diana. You ain't no Princess Diana. 
Now, based on the age, the photos, the videos, and the slight accent that I can hear, she definitely resembles BB. Now, it's hard to know for sure because this evidence is from 20 years ago, but I did use two different facial recognition websites. I put in pictures of Colette Dupree, and what do you know? BB came up and in one of the facial recognition images the LinkedIn profile of a woman by the name of Diane Evans appeared and look at her She looks a lot like BB now putting all this detective work together This is really big and no pun intended by that at all seriously <sighs> I need the men in black to come your ASAP and wipe my memory clean ladies and gentlemen if you will look right here but seriously though, if Diane and Colette really are the same person and are in fact BB, it changes everything. BB had a child that can no longer pursue her goal of having fame and money. So what's the next best alternative? Use her daughter. For years, her daughter was in child beauty pageants, which have received a lot of controversy and then they transition on a TikTok. There's been some inappropriate videos of Bebop that make many people uncomfortable considering her age. There's been live streams where BB purposely plans things in the background to fuel this conspiracy theory, such as handcuffs. People in live streams have told her to touch her nose, tilt her head, or say specific things to show that she is in danger or kidnapped. And it could all just be a coincidence, but she has done them many times. And what makes this thing so much weirder is that Bebop has an older brother who hasn't been seen in their videos for years, but in one of his last appearances, he apologized for having said that he was being forced to be in BB's videos. I lied and I hurt them. I hurt their business, what they were trying to do, something that they enjoyed. And it was something that I shouldn't have done. It was very stupid of me. And I'm very sorry to both of them and to everything that they were trying to accomplish. And what did you lie about? That I was forced. Say it. That I was forced. Were you ever forced? No. Were you ever threatened? No. Was there any consequences to not doing a video? No. Did you like it at the end, being famous? Yeah. At one point, Bebop and BB were supposed to be interviewed live by some company called 15 Minute News where they would be breaking their silence on this whole thing. In that interview, they were going to address the whole conspiracy theory and what do you know, you had to pay to watch it. But apparently now, after all this time, they are breaking their silence in a news interview, but it's crazy because they're making you pay. I'm sorry, but what? You have taunted people on the internet for years, but now you want people to pay to hear your story. Now, it did end up getting canceled, but regardless, the idea of having people pay to hear you speak about your own daughter's abuse and kidnapping, it's disgusting. The comment section in each and every one of their TikToks is spam with people asking if they are in danger or need of help. There have been thousands of videos piling up with millions of views asking if they're okay. BB could easily make a YouTube video or respond to the comments addressing this, saying that she's okay and this whole thing, people are just blowing into proportion, but nope, she continues to use her daughter to generate income. After witnessing the whole Marina Joy situation from years ago and how it turned out the internet was just reaching further than Reed Richards himself, it's sad. And the whole theory is just dumb. Why would a kidnapper let you make videos go on live stream, go to countless stores, go to a carnival, and even go on vacation. And it's disgusting that BB is viewing this thing because it takes attention away from those who are actually in danger and in need of real help. It puts so much more doubt in people calling for real help because you're always wondering if they're faking it for attention to money like Bebop and BB. Now again, I just want to make it crystal clear that these two people we looked at today are not 100% BB. But I showed the evidence, people on social media believe what they want to believe, I believe what I want to believe, and you're entitled to believe what you want to believe. I asked my subscribers to see what they think about this whole thing, and even they think that Bebop and BB are faking this entire thing. And they're disgusted how BB is playing into this whole thing to generate more views and income. I heard about them for the first time about a year ago, and I think since then they've gained about 5 or 6 million followers because of this whole kidnap conspiracy theory. You have a lot more fame, a lot more money than you did one year prior, but doing it this way, it's, it's, it's disgusting, it really is. If you wanna check my previous video on Bebop and BB and my one on Inkostar and Mimi Cliffy, I'll leave it in the description box below. Leave a comment, let me know what you think about this, let's start a discussion. But anyways, that's officially gonna do it for this video, so until next time, it's been Ivan Steph. Peace. TikTok has a massive problem. Girls are being kidnapped and forced to make videos, or at least that's what a lot of people believe. There are several theories going around about famous TikTokers being forced to make videos and make money through these videos for their kidnapper. Two of the most notable TikTokers that we will be discussing today are a sister duo named Inca Star and Mimikluffy and a mother-daughter duo named Bebop and BB. And these theories have been going on for a couple of years with their comment section being flooded, asking if they are in danger, and telling them to wear a specific color in their next video to show that they're kidnapped. But the idea of an influencer being kidnapped and forced 
to make videos is nothing new. You might remember someone by the name of Marina Joyce and the infamous pink dress. Hey guys. Back in July of 2016, YouTuber Marina Joyce posted this video where she was advertising a woman's clothing brand. In the video, she was blinking a lot, often looked to the side, and overall just gave an unusual presence. And because of this, the internet was convinced that she was kidnapped. People were deciphering the video and seeing things that just weren't there because it all turned out to be one giant hoax. Eight years later, even after police went to investigate and even after this whole thing was debunked, you still got people going to re-uploads, not even her own videos, but re-uploads of her videos. People commenting that she's in danger and in need of help. And why this is significant is because in 2024, people are still putting on their detective caps and are obsessed with the idea that a kidnapper would force their prisoner to make TikTok cosplay and emoji dancing videos. So for today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at Inga Star and Mimi Cliffy as well as Beepop and BB. I've looked at these two people before and the videos have done very well because I've uncovered or shed light to some really crazy things. I've shown that Inga Star and Mimi Cliffy are just regular young women who go out and enjoy life at amusement parks and concerts and I've also shown that BB may not be as innocent as we think. The purpose of this video is to put together everything that I've uncovered and expose these people who are faking a kidnapping for money. And I just want to put it out there that this video isn't meant to spread hate to any of the individuals, it's meant to spread awareness. Although they haven't blatantly said that they're kidnapped by refusing to talk about the theories and putting fake hints in their videos to fuel these theories, they're contributing to it. People think that these TikTokers are being controlled by someone to make videos, but the reality is they're controlling you, the viewers, into believing they're kidnapped so that they can get fame and money for themselves. Meet Inka Star and Mimikwipi, a sister duo based in Russia who make videos hand dancing to popular songs and use emojis to show how to do their moves. In their videos, you'll notice that they rarely blink, rarely make any facial expressions, and overall just give a very robotic presence. And because of this, people actually think that they're robots. Yes, you really have people thinking that this is some iRobot Westworld type of stuff and that these TikTokers aren't human. The comments and theories get very ridiculous. For instance, there's a wannabe Sherlock Holmes who noticed that Inka Star put a monster emoji in her video and believes it's a message that a man kidnapped her. They think the monster represents some evil man that's holding them hostage, but the reality is the song that they're dancing to is called The Monster by Eminem and Rihanna. Like what emoji do you want them to use? A carrot? <laughs> People make these emojis mean whatever they want them to mean. It's part of confirmation bias, an important term that everyone should understand. It's essentially seeing what you want to see and forgetting what you don't want to see. So people notice that Inka Star Mimic Cliffy often look tired in their videos, and because of this, they think that the kidnapper is making them stay awake 24 seven and filming videos. But there's one problem. It's a filter. The filter is literally a no sleep filter. The theories have gotten absolutely ridiculous and there's really no stopping them when each and every single one of their videos are spammed with comments like this, saying to wear a particular color to show that they're in danger. One detective video seriously thought that the candy emoji in this video was used to show they got put in a van after a stranger asked if they wanted candy. So some people actually think that this TikTok is just a normal TikTok, but in my thoughts is that she picks the candy basically to tell us that if she got kidnapped and she got offered candy and they took her, but I think that I'm right. <laughs> Do these fans fail to realize that Inka Star and Mimic if you're adults? Like, they're not little kids. Like, if a six year old got asked for candy, I mean, you know, maybe then they would get tricked, but like, they're in their early 20s. I'm in my early 20s. Like, they have money. They could go buy candy. They don't They don't need to go up to some sketchy white van and, and go get free candy. I mean, they got money. Also, to make matters even worse, according to my own comments, apparently I'm kidnapped. Yes, yes, someone really commented saying that I, Ivan Steph, am kidnapped. Bro, like, are you serious right now? Oh my God, maybe I'm kidnapped now. The only way for this to stop is by having videos such as mine focusing on educating their child fan base and by having people comment that they're not kidnapped. If these two women really were kidnapped, they would not be allowed outdoors in heavily populated areas surrounded by hundreds or even thousands of people. Now this, this person gets it. Inka Star and Mimic Cliffy are manipulating you, the viewers, into believing they're kidnapped so that they can get fame and money for themselves. On their Instagram, they have tons of photos of public places such as restaurants, amusement parks, and city streets. What kidnapper would let their victim go public skating? Just look how many people are surrounding Mimic Cliffy. If she was kidnapped and wanted to escape, she could easily signal for help or just run into the crowd like she would just blend in no problem but on top of this a kidnapper would not jeopardize themselves by going outdoors and revealing their identity in the background of the photos on their instagram have popular buildings or monuments where you can easily see the city of which they are located in and a kidnapper would not allow this they've posted photos and videos with other people including their fans who have spotted them in public and on top of all of this if they really are kidnapped then why has no one reported them to be kidnapped
Okay guys, pause. I gotta come forward and be honest with you. I've been lying to you this whole time. <sighs> it turns out that the two really are kidnapped because Ingastar posted this photo on her Instagram and you can see the kidnapper in the background. Yup, just take a look at the comments. They can see the man. You can see the man right there through the mirror. Now, who is this scary man forcing Ingastar and Mimikofi to make hand dancing emoji videos? A cardboard cutout of Ryan Gosling. Ooh, scary. This just goes to show how easily children see what they want to see. They see some male figure in the back background and immediately believe that he is dangerous and a kidnapper. But the truth is, you're not dangerous just because you're a man and men are not the only one who are dangerous. Now with that being said, it takes me to the second pair of TikTokers that we will be looking at, Beepop and BB. So, Beepop and BB, they're a mother-daughter duo people also think are kidnapped. Likewise, people spam the comments telling them to wear a specific collar to show that they're in danger. And people absolutely freak out when they wear a collar that was commented on the previous video. Now, many of the times, the comment that they're referring to was posted after the next video already came out. Meaning that when a new video comes out, people go to the previous video and comment what they were in that new video. And these people comment this stuff so that they can get likes. But either way, when literally every single collar in the rainbow was commented, Beepop and BB are bound to wear one of them. Like, what do you want them to do? Wear an invisible cloak? Someone could comment the color yellow on 20 videos, and for 19 videos, Beepop and BB may not wear the color yellow. But that one time they do wear the color yellow, they freak out and forget about those other 19 times of which they did not wear yellow. And this is confirmation bias. They forget about those 19 times they didn't wear yellow, which should mean that they're safe, and only remember the one time they wore yellow. Now, Beepop and BB have never flat out said they're kidnapped, but the mother, BB, has done a lot of things which keep the conspiracy theories going. For example, the songs they've chose to use for the videos, such as this one which says, please come rescue me. BB has also purposely placed handcuffs in the background of her live stream and has done things that the comments on her live streams are telling her to do. Now, in my last video I posted about Beepop and BB, I looked at two theories about who BB is in the real world. One of them being an ex-convict and the other being an adult performer who posted some very, very, inappropriate pictures and videos. I originally found the theories on Reddit, I read the evidence, and looked for some more evidence myself. I've already talked about it, so I'm not gonna go into detail. If you want, you can watch my other video, but after everything that I read and uncovered, I strongly believe that BB is both an ex-convict and an ex-adult performer. And I'm not trying to hate on BB for this, but the significance of it is because people keep on thinking that some imaginary man is controlling Beepop and BB, forcing them to make videos, and is abusing them. But the reality is the person who's been forcing Beepop to make videos has been right in front of you this whole time. BB. Beepop has an older brother who hasn't been seen in years, but in his last video appearance, he apologized for having previously said that BB, his own mother, was forcing him to make videos. First off, I want to apologize to my mom and my sister Beepop. I lied and I hurt them. I hurt their business, what they were trying to do. And what did you lie about? That I was forced. Say it. That I was forced. Were you ever forced? No. Were you ever threatened? No. Was there any consequences to not doing a video? No. Did you like it at the end, being famous? Yeah. Okay, pause. The fact that she asked him if he likes being famous sounds a lot like gaslighting to me because she's trying to justify that just because he liked being famous, it is okay for her to have forced him to be in videos. Ironically enough, this apology video seemed forced. BB's favorite SpongeBob character has got to be Mr. Krabs because she's absolutely money hungry. Last year, BB was supposed to be interviewed by a group called 15 Minute News where she would finally break her silence about the kidnapping conspiracy theory. But in order to watch the interview, you had to pay for it. That's crazy. Imagine charging people money to hear you finally come forward and say that your own daughter is not kidnapped. It's really sad that the only way she'll say her daughter is safe is by getting money for it. And it's crazy to me that people like this who fake a kidnapping for views and money are allowed to be on these platforms. And mothers exploiting their daughters by forcing them to make videos for money is nothing new. We've got Piper Raquel's mom who was sued by 11 members, formerly part of her squad, and the allegations are disgusting. We've got Jenny Popach's mother who's been accused of pimping out her own daughter. And we've got Danielle Cohen's mom who don't even get me started on that. The point of this video is is not to hate on these daughters, but it's to educate people that it is not just men who can endanger people. A trending example was Gypsy Rose Blanchard, who was a textbook definition of a mother exploiting her daughter for fame and money. There was no imaginary man. It was Gypsy's mother who was faking her illnesses and ruining her own daughter's life for fame and money. In the social media era, there are so many mothers who are exploiting their daughter. Rather than finding regular nine to five jobs, they are using their daughters as money printing machines. Recently, Florida passed a law banning children under the age of 16 from using social media. Now, while I don't 
necessarily agree with that law. There is no doubt that people under the age of 12 are at risk when using social media. When you have eight year olds easily tricked about believing that these two groups of TikTokers are kidnapped, what else could they be tricked about? Ironically enough, those who believe that these TikTokers are kidnapped probably have a greater chance of being kidnapped compared to those who don't believe that they're kidnapped. Because people who believe these TikTokers are kidnapped have an inaccurate understanding of the world and what a kidnapping or abuse really looks like. Kids are essentially led to believe that if you post dancing videos on TikTok and wear a shirt that has a color on it, then you're kidnapped. Anyway guys, that's officially gonna do for this video. The purpose, once again, of this video was to put together everything, hopefully try to put a stop to these kidnapping conspiracy theories. They do more harm than good. People are devoting their attention to these TikTokers, when in reality, there are probably people out there on social media who are actually in danger. But these TikTokers, Ingastar, Mimikwifi, Beep on BB, they are not in danger, they are fine. They are controlling you. They are controlling you and manipulating you into believing that they're kidnapped so you give them more views and money. It's really just creating false narratives about kidnapping. People think a kidnapping looks one way, but in reality, it looks a whole nother way. If you are both educated and entertained, please consider leaving a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, feel free to share this video. What are your thoughts about this entire thing? Leave a comment down below. Let's start a discussion. But anyways, that's officially going to do it for this video. So until next time, it's Ben Diamond Steph. Peace. Also, yo, what do you think of the new setup? I got these nice Nano leaves. Thinking about doing some other things, but this is for now. Yay. Bien. No. Yes, let me know. Okay.